Hi, welcome to my kitchen again. If you have gotten our newsletter, this is the video that goes with our holiday eggnog bread. If you haven't gotten our newsletter yet, go over to the little more info spot over there and subscribe and we'll be happy to send you a free recipe every month. Most of the time I talk about using whole grains, saving money in the kitchen, uh, stretching your dollars. So this one actually combines all those. So real quick, I'm going to get to it so that you don't waste any time. Um, little Food Network elves came in and set up a lot of my stuff so you're not having to watch me measure too much. Um, this is a great recipe for um, gifts or a special holiday breakfast or just great toast with some um, cream cheese on it. It's really good. So it's not like any other fruit cake but it does have fruit and it's a very rich flavor. What we have here is three-fourths cup of eggnog. You can have the canned eggnog or dairy eggnog, whatever you prefer. One-third cup of warm milk. It's actually quite warm because the eggnog is cold. One-quarter cup, whoa, one-quarter teaspoon of uh, vanilla. Medium egg. Now, if that's room temperature, you don't have to make your water too hot, but if it is cold and you're taking it from the fridge, make your water a little warmer. Three tablespoons of organic sugar. Also three tablespoons of cubed up cold butter. Okay those are most of what we call our wet ingredients. Most bread machines you want to put those in first. Sugar is considered wet because it does need to dissolve. Now to this we're going to add four cups of freshly milled whole wheat white flour. Um, if you're not using freshly milled and you're using bag flour. I would not suggest for this recipe you use 100% whole wheat flour because it's going to make it really heavy and dense. You want to use at least half, that would be then two cups, of bread machine flour or bread flour because it has a lot of gluten, it's very light, um, and then half whole wheat. Um, or of course you can use all bread flour, that's your choice. We like to fresh mill because it gives you all the nutrients and this still creates a nice light loaf. So four cups of this, four, three, two, and before I put my last one in, I like to add the salt. This is a tablespoon of salt and my spices. This is a quarter teaspoon, that's a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of salt. A quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. I don't like to add too much of that. It makes it a little bitter. So just a little. And now I'll add my last cup. This is my fourth cup of flour. Four. All right. Because this is freshly milled whole wheat, um, I do want to add a tablespoon of gluten. If you have used bread flour at all from a bag. You don't need to add the gluten because they've already processed it and put it in there for you. That's why they call it bread flour. So then make a little well right in the middle close to the paddle. Pour in a teaspoon and a half of bread machine yeast and you're good to go. It goes in the bread machine so that you can go take care of some other holiday items. Um, bake some more, whatever, and then when the bread machine beeps for the fruit and nut, we're going to add some wholesome fruits um, and give you a couple other options if you're interested. Okay, my machine beeped um, on the add nuts and fruit. Um, you can add a variety of different types of fruits to this. So some people like to add the traditional fruitcake fruit. As long as it's dry and it's not a fresh fruit, you can add it. Don't want more than half a cup because it'll overpower the eggnog flavor. Um, we can have nuts, but what we like to add is a little bit of tang with some organic cranberries. That's about a quarter cup, and some organic dried um, dates. Also about a quarter cup. Keep going. There it goes. That's gonna knead it in there um, without chopping them up into two small pieces. You have to add it 
um, after it's been kneaded for a while, otherwise, if you put it in with all the wet and dry ingredients, it'll pulverize it. You won't have any pretty little sparkles and whole fruits in there. Um, also, real quick, I had to check this, which you have to do sometimes with bread that you use in the bread machine. The dough was a little dry, um, so I had to continue to add a tablespoon of warm water at a time until it was the right consistency. Please make sure that you sign up for the newsletter because that will have the exact um, amount of liquid you need. But always test, test it out. A lot depends on how dry or moist your flour has been, the weather, lots of different things can affect it. So keep an eye on it, uh, even in the bread machine, until it gets to this point, then you walk away. The uh, bread, the holiday eggnog bread has risen up really good. We're getting ready, the machine's going to punch it down in just a second, but I want you to peek at the, the way it looks when it rises. It should not be crackly on the top, it should be nice and, and firm like this. Um, and now the machine's going to punch it down, we're going to shape it into some loaves. Alright, now that the machine has punched it down for me, I like to prepare my surface for this bread with a little bit of cooking spray and my hands as well because I don't want to add any more flour to it because it'll be kind of heavy. So, I'm going to take it out. Oh, it looks really good. And I'm going to flip the top over onto here. Gosh, that looks good. Now, and I'm going to fish out any little hiding cranberries. Flatten it down. Now, for this one, we're just going to make it like a regular loaf <laughs> because um, my kids suggested that we use it for a French toast. So it makes an awesome French toast. Um, but you can make this as gifts. So here's part of saving money. You can make this as gifts and put it in these cool little loaf pans. It'll make about four of them and you can give them to your friends at the office or neighbors or whatever and it's a really tasty gift that I can just about guarantee not too many people make it. Okay, now we're going to roll this up just like you would a regular loaf of bread. Oh, so pretty. Seal your edges, okay, like this. Flip in your edges that are on the end. Now this is going to make a pretty high one because I've, I'm using a smaller pan. I have prepared this pan with spray, but I also like to put a little bit of oil on the bottom, and this is why. Not for sticking purposes, but as you can see, I flipped over my loaf, and I'm going to actually just coat the top of it with a little oil to keep it from drying out. All right, now this is going to have to rise again one more time for about but somewhere between 30 and 45 minutes. You're going to want a pretty good sized crown and want it to almost double in size. And then when you bake it, it's really going to go up nice and high. So, cover it, let it rise again. I really don't know if this is working. Okay, I've taken the, um, I always forget the name, the holiday eggnog bread out of the oven. It's risen. I've let it cool because I need to eat some. So, I, I've taken it out of the oven and it's risen and it's ready to eat. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. And yeah, here's the difference. Oh, swell. This is whole wheat, yes. And because it's milled at home, it's all fresh, has all the good oils and things in it. Um, I'm gonna butter this. Real quick, this is um, a wonderful bread to fix in those small tins for, you know, a gift. Um, my kids asked that I make it so we can make French toast out of it. Also, um, if it starts to go a little stale after it's not been eaten up, which I doubt that'll happen, this also makes a really, really good bread pudding. So you have a few options to do with this. Um, best of all though, it's an inexpensive gift that just shows your love and your care and your time baked into the bread as you give it to somebody for the holidays. It's really good and I hope you give it a try and enjoy it. <laughs>